Hello and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Today is the first pen that I'm going to be reviewing after my binge, my, my spree at the Dallas Pen Show. And the very first pen, where did it go? There it is, that I'm going to show you is, this is my own leather sleeve. It is a Parker 51. Ta-da! Of course, you probably already knew that because I have it in the title of the video, but I am so smitten by this. I had somebody um, who said, don't come back from a show without a Parker 51. And I think they were right because this thing is gorgeous. Okay, let me show it to you. All right, so let's take a look at it first. Uh, the body color is called and and that's really what captured my eye first was this pen because it was sitting there in the sea of blacks and navy blues which i do love the navy blue but this one stood out because i thought it was like a green but it is not it is a navy gray um which is kind of interesting because it's neither navy nor is it gray it's kind of a greenish to me but all right we'll go with parker's original um, thing. So let's start by looking at the cap. So the cap is, it has this Parker arrow, which is their trademark. And then it actually has a jewel. Don't know if you can see the jewel. Let me go right there. Look at that jewel. So excited to have a jewel on my pen. And there are Parker pens that have double jewels. This does not, but you'll see one here and one here, which I think is so nice. And this cap is actually like a, it is a steel cap. It's called the Luster Loy cap. Don't know what that means, but that's what it is. So a very nice springy clip, actually a super nice cap on this thing and um not many scratches that i can see some right here from the cap coming on and off is that a scratch yeah you know it's kind of hard because if you are just at the pen show and you don't have a loop or anything which i did not it's very difficult to see but this pen seems to be in fantastic shape just some darkening up here from inking and i don't think this is a 14k nib although everything out there says it's a 14k nib so don't know and I'm just gonna go in here if I can and that way you can see this thing called tipping I honestly don't have a loop so could not tell if there's tipping or not tipping on this but the feed is in great shape and the gentleman that I bought it from is Avila Pens or Avila Pens, Avila, Avila Pens. And he bought it for his own uh, collection. So he had his loop there and all that and seemed to be a fairly trustworthy guy. Although I don't know him, I'm just going to go by what he said. So anyway, um, this one is an Aerometric. So there are two types of Parker 51s. There are the Aerometrics and the Vacuumetrics. Fancy name for a squeeze converter. And so this one has some writing on the inside here. Hope you can read it. It is, okay, I'm gonna just go slow. Let's see. Okay, there it is. Um, I believe it's just instructions on like how to fill this and it says like four to six times or something like that and again I am kind of going so blind that I can't really see other than made in the USA Parker 51 special all right and then you can see the rest so I was really concerned about this this vac fill uh not vac fill hello um the i don't know is it bladder the this converter part the squeeze converter part and so what i read um from several different blogs is that this thing is kind of special and if you can avoid like taking it out and replacing it then good for you so this is the original one you can tell because it's 
you know, darkened over time, um, etc. It actually is a little bit see-through, like in the sun, you can, you can see through it still. So if you can see through it, it's a good deal. But let me tell you about this. Oh, sack. That's the word I was looking for, for this sack. So it's actually called a ply glass, P-L-I-G-L-A-S-S, -S, ply glass sack. And it is a fancy word for rubber. So it is a rubber sack. And um, in the vintage pens, you should not be using any acidic ink um, so that it doesn't eat through the rubber sack. Um, so it is a, a squeeze converter and um, again, I think the nib is like fine or medium. Some people say it kind of writes right in between there. From most of the information that I found while researching this pen, um, it said about 8.45 mm. So kind of right in between a fine and a medium. So medium fine nib. So this is made in the U.S. What else do I want to say? I want to fill this. That's what I want to do. So... You can have this one or you can have a vacuumatic. And by the way, I'm filling it up with a Waterman, what is it? Encre Blue, inspired blue, which is more like a turquoisey ink. And so when you squeeze this, you should see bubbles. Yeah, I'm gonna come in here so that you can see what I'm doing because I can't even see what I'm doing. All right, so watch, there's bubbles. So you just squeeze it a few times and it should give you a fairly good ink capacity. And that's one of the reasons why they just basically, a lot of people have their Parkers, they fill them up, use them for you know a long while and then um, kind of keep the same ink in there. Um, so I'll, I'll try this ink and see, cause I don't really have anything uh, inked up with with this yet so uh there is this silvery band it's not silver but it's steel and then the cap as well oh i didn't give you comparisons let's do that real quick okay what do i have here i have my ruler all right um let's go with this one first so where am i right about it, it's just short of five and a half inches. So um, it looks like 5.3, uh, 5.4 inches in length um, from the jewel. And that is capped. And then this is, whoops, right next to it is a Twisby. Right next to that, I keep moving these guys. Sorry about that. Right next to that is the Metropolitan, and right next to that is my Platinum 3776. So those are just some comparisons, mainly because those are pens I use all the time. So I just have those there. And then we will uncap it so that you can see. Uncapped is right under five inches. It's a lovely pen. I'm so excited about this pen. Uh, your Twisby is a little bigger. Metropolitan looks like about the same size. My platinum, let's see, about the same size. No, it's actually smaller. Look how much smaller that is. All right, so my scientific measurements, not scientific at all. All right, and you probably want to know what the size is posted, although I don't really post my pens. Also, I don't want to be scratching it here. So I'm just gonna do it for the video's sake. Look at what I'm doing for you here. All right, it's right short of six inches. So about like five and seven eighths looks like. So I'm, and it's actually very nicely balanced. Hmm. All right, so I guess if I had larger hands and wanted to do that, I could. All right, so yes, this is what I wanna do. All right, we're gonna write with this pen on bad paper. Let's see how it does. So this is just a regular pad from Staples and I have not used this yet. I'm so excited. All right. Um, I thought there was something on the nib, but there isn't. I can't tell. All right. Well, we'll just go for it. Oh. Oh. 
Arom aromatic. <laughs> uh, metric. I was like, that doesn't sound right. Aromatic, not aromatic. Maybe it smells good. I don't know. So this was made in, uh, so this pen, again, uh, just doing some research, looks like post-1952. Why do I say that? It's because um, any of these before 1952, they were... Uh, writing down the year, I suppose, on those. And they stopped writing the year on these. And so many people say, based on the color, also the type uh, of pen this is, it's placing it around 1953 to 1958. Um, so let me also do a writing sample. There's like this little bit of a squeaky sound going on. So I don't know why that is. I'll have to do some research on that. But for the most part, this writes very, very smooth. And for a pen that is that old to just be able to be filled and it just writes like a dream, it's pretty amazing. So on this pen, uh, or I should say about this pen, I had a chance to ask several of the people um, who were selling several of the vendors, there were quite a few 51s. And it was actually quite dizzying to try and figure out what is the deal with the pricing. So before I went to the pen show, I had been looking at these online. You can find this pen anywhere from $275 to like $135 online. So that's a huge range and I couldn't figure out what in the world is going on. I didn't actually go looking for this color, but I knew I wanted something that would be a little different, maybe like a burgundy or you know, something just not black because everything I'm ending up with is black, so I wanted something different. And so the the thing with this pen is that when I was asking the people like what what are we looking for in Parker Parker 51s? They said of course the nib uh, what kind of a nib it is. They also said that um, sometimes it matters what kind of a cap you have. So if you have a gold cap, it's not made of gold, of course, but it's just more desirable. So you kind of have to wonder what's desirable, what's not desirable. Also, um, you know, a lot of people want to make sure that the jewel is still there, which this is, and that the nib has tipping. Oh, by the way, I can see Parker written here. Did not notice that. So um, there were a few things to just kind of be looking for. I'm just going to tell you, um, I purchased this, like I said, from um, Avila Pens or Avila Pen, Avila Pens. And they just were really knowledgeable. And it made me feel good to purchase from somebody who at least seemed like they knew what they were doing. Um, and like I said, there were many, many, many vendors there. So I had to kind of figure out what's what. So this is my, uh, I'm writing on Rhodia dot, my Rhodia dot pad in case you're wondering because I totally forgot what I was doing because I started talking about the pen. So let's do another writing sample and see what this does. Hmm. Still that feeling, which is kind of odd. Um, I 
it's not that I mind it, it's just strange. Maybe it's just a little bit of getting used to. So if you know what's going on with this pen, would you just like put it in the comments? Cause I have no clue. Um, it's kind of like almost like a, not a squeak, but it just feels like it's getting ready to squeak, which kind of freaks me out a little bit. Cause I don't like squeaky things. All right. I don't know why I'm writing so close to the other. Uh, so it seems to be fairly wet ink, seems to be a fairly good wet writer. Um, no issues in writing at all. It's very smooth, especially on, I can't really quite, I was going to say, especially on Rhodia paper, but I really can't tell the difference between this one or that one. So I think it writes pretty well on both. Uh, which is something that I'm always looking for because of my just regular notebooks and stuff for work. So anyway, I am excited. I'm actually very, very excited to have a Parker 51 in my collection. I have been wanting a vintage pen. I'm actually, I was after the Schaefer's and there was the Parker. So, you know, that's just literally how it was going for me uh, during that whole uh, pen show. And it's wonderful to be able to purchase something from people who know what they're doing. And uh, if you have one of these, or if you want one of these, or if you like one of these, would you just put your comments down for me? And also, if you know what's going on with the almost squeak part in the writing, would you also share that? Maybe you can tell me like what to do with, with that as well, or maybe nothing to do. Maybe that's just the way this writes. Don't know. This is the first time I've inked it, first time I've written with it, and I'm pretty pleased. So if you would, please write a comment. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, do that, please. And also hit the bell icon, and then you'll be notified of new videos coming out because I am going to be reviewing some more pens. Until next time, bye.